Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nathaniel Xavier Ross, and I am an ordinary individual from the streets of Baltimore City, Maryland. Shaped into becoming a Fortune 400 corporate executive, shaped into becoming a best-selling author, shaped into becoming an empowerment coach, shaped into becoming a podcast, a global podcast host, with a plethora of other titles and positions. In short, tonight, I get the opportunity to share with you through about my personal story, based off my personal values, on how the power of inclusion impacted my life. So let's get started. <clears throat> when I was in college, we had a class of about 100 people, and the professor says, you need to break down into groups of six. So my group of six, four of the people in the group wanted to talk about religion. So we had to take the opportunity to have that discussion about religion, and I got the opportunity to go to a Baptist church, a Catholic church, to the Jewish synagogue, to a Jehovah Witness hall, and I got to watch people worship. But my takeaway from there was that I was able to now understand that people practice their faith, and we all do it differently, but it was through the power of inclusion and in participating in that class that I now accept people for where they are in terms of how they practice their faith. My second value is health. When I was 30 years old, I was just not feeling well. And I went to the doctor and I said to the doctor, I'm not doing good, I'm, my head hurts, I got aches and pains, something's wrong with me. And the doctor said, no, there's nothing wrong with you, we can't find anything. Second, I went to get a second opinion, the doctor said the same thing, second doctor did. So I went to my family and to my friends and I said, I'm not well, but they keep telling me I'm well. So through my network, someone came back and introduced me to a doctor, medical doctor, but also a holistic doctor. I talked to that doctor for about five minutes, and the doctor said, you have Lyme disease, and we can treat it. Here, 32 years later, I've had no problems, no symptoms whatsoever but through the power of inclusion of my family and my friends in that network, I was able to get healed. So my third value is my family, my family and my friends. And I don't have enough time to tell you about my family and my friends because I was raised in the streets of Baltimore City in the foster care system. So I didn't have the same structured family that most people have. So, as I went through life, I met kind and generous people who included me in their families. And, you know, I can't name them all because there's so many, but there are a few that I can. Reverend Fitz, who kept me out of the streets when I was young, when I could have easily gotten arrested or killed. When I went into college and right after college, Mr. and Mrs. Domain took me in, had made sure I had dinner at their home on Sundays. Uh, Marie Henderson, when I moved to Ohio, I was in a new state and she made sure that I had someone to, to uh, bounce ideas and suggestions off of and to just learn about the area. Sherry Davies in Ohio. Uh, when I moved into my corporate position, Mike Weldy and uh, Robin Weldy, Pam Flyth, Carl Flyth, these people had a tremendous impact. And they're all from different walks of life, different religious backgrounds, different colors, just an eclectic group of people. And more recently, since I've retired from corporate America, I have Bill Porter and Stephanie Jackson, and they have taken me in as well, even as an older guy. So it is through that process of inclusion that my family is not only biological, it is those friends 
who chose to take me in and I've chosen to take them. And that is the power of inclusion. So as I move from that support system into my work environment, there are key people in my work environment that did the exact same thing. We all need mentors. And there were a number of mentors along the way. In my corporate position as a, a, a global executive officer, there weren't too many people of color like me sitting in the boardroom. But there were two very generous white men, Ed Cannon and Jeff Johnson. And they took me under their wing. And they said, we're going to show you this corporate rope, the corporate ropes. And as a result of that, my, my career skyrocketed. Again, the power of inclusion. If these folks had not included me, included me, I would have never achieved the level of success that I had. Now, in this last group of people I'm going to talk about, they chose to, well, my finances were great. I did a good, one of the things I was able to do is a great job with my finances. But I went to the Accelerated Business School for Entrepreneurs. And DC Cordoba, Kerry Zuria, DC is the owner. Kerry Zori is the head instructor. Jack, I met Jack Canfield there 30 years ago. Jack Canfield, Chicken Soup for the Soul, became one of my mentors. And because they embraced me, it took my finances to a whole different level. And because my finances went to a whole different level, we get to my next value, community. I am able to help people give back to the community to make a difference in people's lives. Now, don't get me wrong, there's one more value, education. I had to learn, and I had to learn a lot in all those different areas. I continue to have to learn in all of those different areas. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the embodiment of the power of inclusion. So I have one thing before I leave the stage tonight. Will you please open your minds and open your hearts when you go back to your respective communities and you let someone come into your spiritual space, let someone into your health affairs, let someone into your family, let someone come into your educational space, let someone come into your career, Give them the opportunity to let the power of inclusion do for them what it did for me. And then sit back and watch the processional effect that it will have on the rest of the world in making the world a better place. Thank you so much for your time this evening. God bless. <laughs>